Hello everyone, welcome back to the Wolf Pack. Now today, consider it a updated studio tour as a breakdown station. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you're filming, it's very, very helpful to have different areas designated to have different setups. If you can, and if you have the space. Like before, I used to have um, one this was my very first quote station. Technically it was just a studio because it's just a $40 Ikea table that I put against a brown wall. And that was my first station. Three years later, I revived this table in order to play around with some new top-down angles. So today I wanna run you through my main angle station, the editing station, the B-roll station, and the last one we'll call it the commercial station. Now, a lot of the things that I'm gonna show you today are really over the top. They're mostly made for like client work and also in conjunction with like the YouTube videos. This is all stuff that I use. I'm gonna show you what I use, how I use them. That way, hopefully it'll give you some ideas and maybe just some thoughts about, you know, what you want to invest in, what you don't want to invest in, just some ideas about how to set up your stuff. That's all. Plus I can binge watch creators breaking down their YouTube studio setup all the time. So hopefully this will help you as well. So here I have a backplate attached to a camera or a hot shoe mount, whatever you want to call it. So this attaches to the bottom of the camera. And then from there, this is going to go right up top to a ball head mount. This ball head pretty much fits any standard plate that attaches to your camera. And in turn, this attaches to a spigot. This is a spigot. It's a metal piece that attaches to your camera, which in turn is gonna be gripped by the grip head. So this grip head allows me to clamp a spigot on both sides, one for the camera and then one for the microphone. On top of that, this grip head actually is a different piece as well because this attaches to the extendable arm or the boom arm. So this grip head will attach to the boom arm and then we have the microphone on this side. My microphone also has been upgraded. I've been using the Rode NTG4 Plus for quite some time. This one sounds so much better. It's also a omnidirectional mic. This is the Audio-Technica AT4053B. We can never have easy names for gear, I swear. Now it took me ages to find the right thing to fix this problem, but this is a really long table. I think it's an 80 inch table and most arms will only go to 40 inches and it sounds like it's enough. It's not because the 40 inches actually is a lot less because the C stand itself will be pushed a little bit further back from the table. And then this 40 inches, it's like the whole entire length. So in reality, it just comes up a little bit short. Long story short, the extendable arm allows you to have a much better length. That way it goes to the center of a table if you're using a long table. It's really helpful to have this. And on top of that, I also have another extendable arm on here. So this is the back end of my studio shots. This right here is one of my favorite things in this particular station because it's an over the shoulder angle. So it's the like exact same copy as that C stand, but what's different is that this one is up really high. That way it goes over the shoulder when I have different angles shooting from right here. Lastly, you notice how there are sandbags attached to the end of these extendable arms because they are really heavy and you also want to counterbalance it, especially if you have a very expensive camera that's being held on the other end. And then there's also the recorder. This is always off to the side. That way it's not in the frame of my shots, but this recorder is always off to the side and it's attached via a USB and there's a little electrical port um, attached to the table as well. So that right there is my main studio shot. Next up, let's talk about my editing station. Now, my most frequent question as of late, two questions. One was, Tim, how do you set up your top-down angles? Well, now you know how exactly I do that. And two, what happened to your PC? Well, that one has been officially retired and now this is my new editing setup. Now, today's sponsor of this video is FlexiSpot. Now, let's talk about this table. This is the FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7. Now this is a motorized sit-stand desk. It has a touchscreen which you can use to crank all the way up or crank all the way down to any height you want. You can also program it. That way it has pre-programmed heights. What's also been pretty convenient is that it does have a USB to the right of the controller. It's pretty nice that I can just plug my phone directly right next to me instead of having to reach all the way back to where the outlets are. What's also pretty nice is that this table can go super, super short to like 21, 24 inches. It's nice if you have kids and you wanna double this up as like a drawing table. I'm always trying to be conscious of it because I don't have kids, but I have a niece. So she tends to play around with this a lot for the past few weeks. There's a pretty cool safety feature about it. Like for instance, if the table's going down, like your knees are below it, it won't like keep going, it'll stop. So yeah, that is the FlexiSpot desk. If you're in the market for a sit-stand desk, 
definitely check them out. They have some Black Friday deals going on too. So I'll leave links to all that down below. Thank you once again to Flexspot for sponsoring today's video. Now onwards to my editing station. As you've seen, it is not a PC anymore. Right now I'm using the Apple Studio, the base model. The Apple Studio has been a freaking monster of a computer. It has handled everything that I've thrown at it like freaking butter. So I've been editing on it. I've been using DaVinci Resolve, color grading on it, having Lightroom open in the background, having uh, Adobe Audition open in the background, and it's run everything so seamless. And there have been no upgrades to this at all. It is literally the baseline model. My monitors too have upgraded them to a more fancy version. This is the Apple monitor, bougie, overpriced thing, whatever. But let me tell you now, the colors here and the richness and the vividness of the colors that you see on these, on these screens are unreal. I have literally loved editing so much with this setup. It is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever used and it makes me very, very excited to edit footage, especially color grading. Other than that, my editing station is super simple. I have the Razer Naga Pro wireless mouse. I just love using the number keypads because it speeds up my editing workflow by a ton. I like key all these things together so they can do different things like zoom in, zoom out, cut all in one, one mouse. And then the keyboard, nothing fancy. I mean, it's pretty expensive, but you know, it's not like, anything crazy like the Razer keyboards that I've been using in the past. The goal here was to make everything wireless. I also have my Shure SM7B microphone along with a Rode arm attached here to the left side of the table. I always use this in case I have conference calls uh, and also for like doing voiceovers. They're mostly for conference calls because I like to upgrade the quality of the video too because the tripod cameras that you've been seeing, I attached them to the back behind this setup. That goes into USB-C from the uh, camera to the computer and then of course the microphone for better audio quality just because you know when you are potentially meeting clients the mentality is if you are committed to having quality setups then you will likely attract more quality clients and it seems to be the case so far so I'm very thankful for that but yeah just some things to some things to consider when you are taking calls it's details like that to help make you stand out not just like fancy equipment and gear but just going through a better setup and attaching DSLR to use versus a computer you know, default camera. Now, last thing here is this Focusrite. Basically, when you use a microphone like this, it attaches with something called an XLR cable. There is no input for an XLR cable goes to your computer. So instead, it goes through this middle ground, this little box right here called the Focusrite something, um, called the Focusrite Scarlet Solo. So that attaches to this box, and in turn, that box attaches to your computer. Simple as that. Now, one of my favorite stations today, I think I've said that about freaking everything today, that everything's my favorite, but it really is. It makes me excited to film. But this is the B-roll station. Initially, this was my podcast station for revamped, but I've stopped revamped since. A ton of reasons why. But anyways, for B-roll, I have this, well, a set of wooden panels that I, um, me and my dad put up on this wall initially, painted it all black. And these are the wooden slats, but then in between them, I don't know if you remember from my old studio, but I had these like $25 Amazon lights. I'm eventually gonna need better lights later on because they do create this horizontal line that's not my favorite in filming, but I've been using them overall, it's not bad. And then if you look down here, this is just a black square table that I picked up from Target and I put it in this corner and I just love this matte black corner that I've created. And you have lights in the background, plus there's also a smoke machine on the bottom. So that way when I blow smoke from behind this, it'll create this really cool dreamy effect where smoke just rises from the back and helps accent all the products in the front too. I've also talked about this little ladder thing that I've been using too. Overall, this is a really simple setup. Table in a corner, paint everything black, put lights in the background, and you have a very nice designated B-roll station. Sometimes too, I really like to use different textures and I got this Lazy Susan also from Target and I put this on top. And then that way you can add some motion when you're doing some B-roll of all your miniatures and cars and whatnot. Okay, now we get to the final station, the commercial station. Now, this is something that everyone can use because all it is is just black paper. As long as you have black paper in the background, you can make it work. And another thing to note too is that when you're using lights, the bigger the light, the more diffused the light will be. I also upgraded my light too. I used to have a smaller one, but since you know I got a bigger space, I can also have a bigger, more <laughs> intrusive light dome too. This one has been amazing because it makes the light so soft and so beautiful. I also put all my C-stands on wheels now because it just makes life so much easier. Okay, so in this commercial station, it's really, really easy to use for everyone. All you need is black paper, which you put behind you. And then you need a light. Could be the $40 light that I've used 
since the beginning of my videos, that one looks perfectly fine. But you have a light right up top and then you have one table. And if you don't have a table with nice texture, usually it's really good to have matted textures like this one. Um, that way it doesn't reflect the light back at you. That's the thing I don't like about my whiteboard table too because it reflects everything. And I thought it was gonna be cool at first, but with light glares and equipment above it, it reflects all that. And you don't wanna see that in your shot. So that is one thing I do regret is getting a whiteboard table. But other than that, you can just also drape like a black cloth over it, some linen, and it'll work out. So table right here with linen. And I use that for like the Tang Garden commercial. I use it for the Survival of the Fattest, the recent commercial that I've done there. And for pretty much every single cinematic or Kickstarter trailer, I've used this setup. Black paper, one light above, and table right in front. That's pretty much it. And then for your lights, you always wanna put it as close as you can to all the board game components. That way it doesn't get a weird glare and everything is really, really nice and soft. So other than that, those are my one, two, three, four stations that I use on a daily basis. I hope you found this video helpful in some way. And obviously don't feel obligated to buy everything from this video. There's just to show you what I use on a daily basis, how I use it. And hopefully, like I said, we'll give you some ideas. But if you have any questions about my setup, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you are looking to upgrade next because I would love to find out and see where you're going and where you're upgrading parts of your studio. So with that said, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.